How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch and I'm back with another review. Today it's more fight provided to us by Blowfish Studios. Let's just get straight into this one. You take control of Moira Kale, whose life is about to change. A simple mission turns into an epic interstellar journey of exploration. The story really is quite good here, and it keeps you wanting to explore and find out more. Here you'll find out about Myra's mysterious past and what her relationship to a coveted substance called Morphite is. In terms of the audio, I think for an indie title the audio is rather good, but there are some issues. The fact that the protagonist is voice acted and so are a couple of other characters you meet along the way is always a win, and especially when it's done to a decent standard. I especially liked Kit Kat who has some really funny lines and is one of those characters you can't help but laugh with. Who knew a floating robotic cat? could be at times so funny and often breaks the ice in situations where danger is present. The music here sets the tone really well in outer space. This is a slower paced first person shooter than most will be used to and the devs have done a really good job with the music choices from the music in your ship which gives you a feeling of having to get a move on to the more relaxed mysterious melodies when you reach certain planets. The issue I mentioned is to do with the music being different volumes throughout. Sometimes it's difficult to hear the characters speak when the music is quite loud and it just drowns out everything else and also there were some issues where the music would stop in certain situations when you reach certain planets. But overall I found it to be a really good experience which matched the game really well. In terms of visuals and performance it's always going to be a split opinion here, but personally, I very much enjoyed the visuals, even though they are of a low polygon affair, which gives it that retro feel. Of course, this game's visuals would be compared to games like No Man's Sky, but this is a very cool looking game in its own right. The planets look varied, and that's the most important thing, and the scenery does look really beautiful. Exploring certain planets at night and seeing all the colourful, differing wildlife with neon on them looks really fantastic. Each place showcasing a wild and different variation of wildlife and plant life. The architecture is drawn to a really good standard and everything looks mysterious like you want to go in and explore. The game did give me a few issues with frame rates though which was a disappointment. These problems were more apparent in docked mode when having multiple moving objects on screen or turning really quickly in certain situations. The frame rates were a little bit too erratic and inconsistent at times for my liking and when this is a first person shooter FPS I often find that any frame rate problems in these types of games become really magnified and hamper the experience slightly. Now this game has been hyped for a little while now, drawing comparisons to the games I mentioned above. No Man's Sky had its own hyperball at the time, and the game never really hit the heights everyone thought it would. But you have to remember that game had a £45 or a $60 price tag at the time. Comparing this to No Man's Sky or even Metroid is wholly unfair uh, in my opinion, and puts way too much pressure on this game to deliver the goods. It would of course be a quite incredible feat had it done so, but unfortunately this game does not reach the heights that many wanted. The gameplay is really quite a simple affair, on your ship you get to choose which planets you explore using a simple menu system which over time becomes just a little bit repetitive. You can either go to the planet which will further the story by acquiring key items, solving some pretty easy puzzles and by traversing some platforming elements. In between you can take a break from the main quest by exploring some of the other planets which give you a little respite from the main campaign if you want it and gives you a longer experience of the overall game. You can choose to a certain extent how you play, the main campaign only, side planets or a little bit of both of course. 
Exploring is okay at first and the side quests are quite different to say the least. You can play darts, save someone from sort of zombie looking creatures and others from dinosaurs, but to name a few. You farm your resources, scan some plant life and kill some dangerous animals and then leave. Scans can be exchanged for chunks if it's common and chunks can be used for all sorts of upgrades. Rarer scans can be used to directly upgrade your suit for example and it's all very simple to do from upgrading your suits and weapons to the ship itself. When moving from planet to planet you may have to maneuver your ship through asteroid belts or you may get into a battle with another spaceship and you can take them down, bargain with them or run away. So this is really interesting and makes the sort of traversing between planets a little bit more of a fun experience. The upgrade system is designed so you can explore some of the further to reach planets later on which at the beginning are uninhabitable due to them being too hot or too cold for example and while these are some of the more fun side quests it all became a little bit stale rather too quickly for my particular taste but that's not to say it will for you. The game is more about exploration which in theory sounds brilliant and the procedurally generated planets you would think help the game remain fresh. The reality however is quite different. Many planets are a little barren with not much around and were not that fun to explore having explored say 10-15 of the same planets. Killing enemies didn't feel that engaging to me and the AI here is not too clever. Often enemies will just rush at you begging to be shot. You'll probably end up dying from falling off a platform more than anything else. In between travel you'll have to stop off at local space stations within the planetary systems to refuel which you'll need chunks for so you can reach further distances in your ship. You can either refuel your ship at the space station itself from a menu system which is welcome or you can explore each station to your heart's delight. What really spurred me on though was the main campaign as it's the most interesting part of this game for sure. Each planet you reach in the main campaign isn't randomised and as you progress you unlock items to help you get further and it's rather interesting finding out more about the story. The controls are tight both in handheld and in docked mode and if the controls are a little bit too sensitive for you it can be changed in the options. There are some platforming elements which are okay but uh, I never found mixing platform with an FPS go together very well. You can use the shoulder buttons to auto aim if you like which makes things a little bit easier. The game sits in and around the price many of these mid-range tier indie games are priced at $14.99 or £13.49 in the UK. You get a decent story here and many planets to explore and you're looking at around 8 hours for the main campaign. However once you manage to upgrade your character and ship there's very little to come back to. There's no online modes or multiplayer here, not that they're needed to be honest. This is strictly a solo experience which will be fine for most. Personally I very very much like a good solo experience as it's a nice departure from all the multiplayer games around now. Sometimes we have to remember that games like this are not AAA titles with AAA prices, yet we expect so much more these days. You cannot fault the developer's ambition here, that is for sure. The game is beautiful with a good atmosphere, it has mysterious quality about it, but here it's not quite enough and more experienced players I believe will expect more from this adventure and more of a challenge. Ultimately it's all about your expectations though. Unfortunately the game falls short from both a technical standpoint on the Switch to the gameplay itself. For some exploring the planets and discovering new things whilst progressing the campaign will be enough and the simplicity of it may be what you're looking for. Anyone else looking for something more complex though and more engaging, best looking elsewhere. For me, this is a solid, could have been better, 6.5 out of 10. Now guys, if you enjoyed this review as always, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up for me. If you're a new watcher here, then consider subscribing. We've got plenty of reviews like this one on our channel and we put everything we can into them. Last but not least, leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this game or any other Nintendo Switch game. My name is Juan Romero bringing you the Morphite Review and I'll see you on the next one.